So what you saw in the last tutorial was something called solving variables, which is basically saying that, you know, I can find any, I can solve for any variable that you give me, provided that you give me an end result, which is literally true. Basically, I can solve for x. I can figure, tell you exactly what x is, as long as you tell me, you know, I mean, I can tell, I can solve for x, I can, you know, if I were to give you some long equation, I can solve for x just as long as you give me an end result. So just as long as you can give me an end result, I can give you an exact value of x, which, you know, would, in this scenario would actually be 0, so that's useless. Um, let me try something like plus 1 equals 9. So, you know, basically what we do in that scenario would be like, you know, x plus 7 equals 9, and then your value will be x equals 2. And I like to box my answers as soon as I find out exactly what the variable is equal to. So basically, we're saying it, what we're saying is, I can find any value of x, provided that you just give me an end value for x. Which, if you think about it, like I said, it's extremely, you know, plausible, but... In the, be honest, in the real world, how many times does things work out exactly to be your way? A little to none. For that, we have things called expressions. And expressions are basically equations, so to speak. But the only difference between expressions and equations is that expressions don't have an equal sign. An equal sign basically sets two, um, you know, values and says, okay, they're equal to each other. So x, which is something, and 4, which is, you know, in tally marks be 4. Because of this equal sign, we can automatically assume that this 4 is also applicable to x. Expressions, on the other hand, will not, will not have an equal sign. And an expression can go as long as to say x plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Now, this is still an expression because until we have an equal sign, an equal sign will basically set this equal to something. And equal signs can even go before, you know, a value or something. We can, we can even make this 24, but we're not going to do that. Like I was saying, though, um, as long as there's no equal sign, we have this thing called an expression. And what expressions basically mean is, okay, from now on, if you don't have a value for the equal sign, you know, we can't we can't figure out the value for x. I'm not saying you want to figure out the value of x, because that's impossible. Einstein couldn't tell you the value of x. There's just so many things that could work, because we have no limit. We don't have anything saying, okay, it has to be equal to 16, so, you know, 4 plus 2 is 6, or this 1 is 7, so 16 minus 7 is 9, I think. Did I screw that up? No, I did not. That's right. But I'm not saying that because Einstein couldn't tell you that. If we had a value, if we had an n value, like 16 or something, then we could give you a, a value of 9 for x. But any value can work right now. We, we can make this 65, and it still works. 65 plus 4 is 69. 69 72 would be your end result. Is that right? Well, I don't know. We have no equal sign. So for this... We say, all right, this is an expression. We're basically stating that, you know, x plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. That's all we're saying. Now, while we can't figure an exact value for x, we can still simplify this equation a little bit more. And by simplifying it, I mean putting it, you know, with the least amount of writing possible, least amount of actual digits possible. Now, for example... While we have x plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, and, you know, x, we can't do anything with that. What we can do is add the 4 and 2 together, which would get, which would net us x, oh, I don't know why I did that, x plus 6 plus 1, which is basically saying, be, although we don't have an expression, per se, a value for x, we can still simplify this to put it in equal, as simple possible terms as possible, which is basically what expressions are supposed to be done in pre-algebra. In other words, we can make this x plus 7. 
because we're going from x plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, and 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. So we're just going to put 7 right there. Now, can we simplify this anymore? Can we add 7 to an unknown number? We can. But how do we state that? There's no way. We can't say x plus 7, you know, and we're just going to call that uh, 69. Why not? No, it, it, we can't do that because we don't know the value of x. So we're basically saying right now, okay, adding x 7 to a random number. Basically, that's what we're saying. I think anything in that thing is going to act funky. I don't know. Anyways, we're basically saying that right now. We're basically saying, all right, add, you know, 7 to an unknown number as of right now. Because um, we're saying, you know, x is an unknown number. We don't know what x is. But whatever x is, you're going to want to add 7 to that number. And there's nothing else we can say apart from that. So let's try another one now that you kind of possibly maybe not really know. Get this. Let's say that we have this long expression, x plus 9 plus 3 plus x plus x plus, I'll say x, minus x. We can always do that. Actually, no, I, won't, I don't want to get into that just yet. And we're not going to give an equal sign to it. So how are we supposed to go about even solving this? Remember, since there's no expressions, we can have to simplify it, put it in the like, you know, most simple terms possible. And then there's nothing else we can do with that expression. Now, expressions, basically, you're going to want to write your expressions on new lines. So this is my second line. This would be the second line, like a sheet of paper, you know. Sheet of paper is my first line, my second line. My second line, I'm going to want to add... No, oh, actually, I want to get rid of this. I'm going to have to teach you guys this a little later. I'm going to want to add 9 and 3 together. Because we can't add x and 9 together. And you, don't, you guys probably don't know this yet, but we can't add x and 3 together either. So what we're going to want to do is do x plus 12 because we're adding 9 and 3 together. I have 9 of something plus 3 of something plus an x amount of something. Well, I know I have 9 and 3 of something, so I'm going to put that together and I have 12. So now I only have 12 plus x amount of something. So that's the simplest way of writing it. And this is literally called simplifying. This is like, you know, the technical term simplifying expressions I don't know in case you're just um, you want to learn this for algebra class simplifying expressions and when a when a expression is like this meaning there's no other way we can go there's no, no other clarification we can give to it it's called this is called um, being in simplified I don't know why it's doing that this is called being in simplified form. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. The next part, we're going to focus on a little bit of subtracting. See you guys then.